Laura Renner couldn't be more proud of her dogs. You think you guys are the talking brothers, right? And it looks like the feeling's mutual. <laughs> Captain. The 15-year-old musher and her team of Siberian Huskies back home in Alton after competing in one of the premier sled dog races for teens in the world, the Junior Iditarod, a 150-mile two-day race across the Alaska wilderness. It's kind of bittersweet at this moment. Like, at, for at one point, like, we're home. So the dogs have their run yard, I have my room, like, um, back to the normal routine. But on the other hand, like, Alaska was so amazing. Can I have a kiss? No. Laura finished 10th out of 11 mushers and made history as the first kid from New Hampshire to ever race in the Junior Iditarod the state flag hanging in her honor at the start and finish lines. Be for like, wow, you drove all the way up here? It was definitely um, a pretty big reaction up there because, I mean, nobody had really done that before, especially to drive up with your own dogs. 12 Huskies made the 5,000 mile trek with Laura and her dad, Steve Renner. 10 would race, two spares. From New Hampshire, Team Snowspeeder headed north into Canada, Quebec and Ontario, then through Minnesota, South Dakota, Wyoming, Montana, back into Canada, British Columbia, the Yukon, and finally Alaska. There it is. Welcome to Alaska. All right, ready? We're going to make the jump over, Lars? Jump <laughs> we made it. We made it. Unbelievably, we made it. 17 days on the road. They logged 1,000 dog walks along the way. We got up, we walked the dogs, we fed the dogs, and then we hit the road. It was just day after day after day of that. In between pit stops, postcard views, and so much wildlife. Vistas around every turn. It was beautiful. Also stressful, the roads, we didn't see pavement from the time we got from um, Fort Nelson, which is about 300 miles into the Alaska Highway, all the way to um, Palmer, Alaska. Roads were just ice covered. The conditions just as wild at their lodging in Wasilla. They had uh, a cabin, I guess is what you would call it. Laura and her dad affectionately dubbed it the shack. Well, it was quite a shock when we first got there. We were a little unnerved. It was rustic and it was um, primitive. The heat wasn't working, so it was around 10 degrees inside the cabin. We had an outhouse. We didn't have a sink. It had electricity, no running water. The bonus, its proximity to the Iditarod Trail, where Laura would spend one month leading up to the race, taking practice runs and getting the dogs acclimated to Alaska. On race day, jitters kicked in. I was so nervous. I didn't eat, I didn't drink anything, and then it came time to put my race jacket on and put on my gear, and I was just fumbling with, my hands were shaking, and I mean, I just felt sick. I knew that the dogs could do it. I knew that Lara could do it. Uh, it was just getting her over those nerves. Three, two, one. It didn't take long before Laura hit her stride. She waited out about 50 yards and turned around and waved to the crowd with this huge smile on her face. And I just breathed the biggest sigh of relief at that point. Like then I could be emotional. Like then I was like, She's really gonna do this. Everything fell into place and I was like, okay, I'm good. I'm with my dogs. I'm gonna do exactly what I've done every single training run since five years ago when we started. And right there sending her off, Maya, the stuffed husky toy she got when she was five years old. And the reason she fell in love with Siberians and sled dog racing, by her side ever since. At 10, she got her first real husky, Storm. He's part of her team, even took over lead 20 miles before the checkpoint. He did amazing. Um, he just surprised me so much, because normally in training we wouldn't have put him in lead, um, just because he sets a slower pace than everyone else. But in those conditions, he was able to maintain a steady pace 
um, which none of the other guys could. Fresh fall and snow made the conditions slow. The dogs had to work twice as hard, but eventually they found their groove. They did really good. We definitely kept up a slow pace. Um, we averaged about seven miles an hour. Um, which we normally would have averaged nine miles an hour. 75 miles along the National Historic Iditarod Trail before hitting the checkpoint on the first day. Laura camped outside overnight with her dogs for the required 10 hours before heading back another 75 miles to the finish line in Willow, 15 below zero. I got about four hours of sleep overnight and then I was falling asleep on my sled the next day. Alaska's beauty and Laura's competitive drive propelled her the rest of the way. It just hit me several times throughout the race. I am running dogs in Alaska on the Iditarod Trail in the Junior Iditarod. Just a moment for me that uh, I can never really explain. Laura never expected to win. She runs with Siberian Huskies. Every other team races Alaskan Huskies, a much faster breed. The people would chuckle and make jokes about Siberian Huskies. The goal was to cross the finish line on her own terms, with her entire team happy and healthy. Everything went perfect. I've never have changed anything. Laura's far from ready to ride off into the sunset. She dreams of one day racing in the 1,000-mile Iditarod.